Hello everyone. So in this video lecture, we are going to define and derive the expression for the magnifying power of a compound microscope. And basically there are two cases. One is the strained eye. That means when the final image is formed at LDDB, that is the least distance of distant vision. And case two, we will deal it with the second part of this particular video. So we have a compound microscope which consists of two lenses. Now here is our tiny object which we wish to see it in an enlarged way. So this is our object. Now, since this object is near to this lens, this is known as objective. And we are supposed to see from here. So eye is very, very close to this lens. So this is known as eyepiece. Both are convex lenses. Now the aperture of this lens is very large. Aperture means the diameter of this entire lens and the aperture of this lens is less compared to this one another thing the focal length of the objective that is fo should be less than the focal length of the eyepiece so fe is larger than fo so what do we have over here this point is the focus of the objective and this is again focus of the objective this is twice the focus of the objective so if this distance is f this distance is also f this is 2f now this object is placed slightly behind the focus of the objective lens now what is going to happen let let's pull out one ray from the head of the object and then it should like this now the image will be formed somewhere over here that is due to the fact that when object is between f and 2f the image is beyond 2f and we can easily form the image let's directly pass the ray from the optical center it should have passed through here slightly error over here now the another ray would pass like this it would pass through f and final image is formed over here for this lens okay so let me call this object as a b and this image as a dash b dash correct now this image is a real and inverted image because the object is between f and o now what happens is this image behaves as an object for this lens that is due to the fact that these rays are continue are going to continue to hit this lens so the incident rays coming to this lens appears to be coming from this so this behaves as an object for this lens now this lens can be shifted in both the ways its focus is somewhere over here so this is the focus of the eyepiece let me write down this as fe now between o and f if there is any object we know that virtual and enlarged image is formed on the same side of the object somewhat like this so simply i'm going to draw that this is our final image so for this lens this is the object for this lens this is the image but for this lens this behaves as an object but for this lens this is the final image let me call this as b double dash and a double dash correct now how do we make its ray diagram very easy simply pass this ray from o only one ray is enough to understand and the second ray would be going like this since both the rays are going to diverge and if you extend it backwards you will get the image now this final image is virtual and erect but it's highly magnified that is due to the fact that both the lenses are magnifying them to some extent okay now what else we are supposed to define the magnifying power now magnifying power capital m is the ratio of beta to the alpha now what do you mean by beta and what do you mean by alpha this is the same small object which we are going to see in front of the eye we are going to put this object in front of the eye such that this object is b that is least distance of distinct vision there is no lens over here so we are directly seeing this object with the help of this with the help of our eye so the head of the object making the angle at the eye is alpha but provided the distance should be capital d that is alpha right now the same object is placed in front of this objective then its image is formed here and the final image is here so the final image head is going to make some angle with the lens or the eye one and the same because eye is very close to this lens and this angle is beta this one okay so this is angle beta and since all angles are very very small because you are going to use this compound microscope to view very very small objects so that means all angles are very small so we can also write this as tan beta upon tan alpha mathematical identity when the angles are small tan beta is equal to sine beta is equal to beta and so on for the alpha as well so let's pause and once again understand this is the objective lens this is the object placed slightly behind the focus of the objective now this is the object so its image will be real and inverted behind 2f of this lens so here this is a real and inverted image 
now the rays will still continue and hit the lens so this lens for this lens this is the object and now since this object is between o and f because it is a larger focal length so virtual and direct image is formed of the same side this is the final image now since we are studying the first case we are assuming that this gap is d this is least distance of distinct vision that is 25 centimeters so we are assuming that all these things have been done in such a way that the final image is formed at d from the eye or the lens because these two are very very near okay now let's continue our discussion on 10 beta so i'm going to consider this triangle and 10 beta is this divided by this so it is equal to a dash b dash upon this divided by this now let me make one thing very clear that o a dash is this distance now this distance is the object distance for the eyepiece so u e correct now let me write this as u e then divided by 10 alpha now for 10 alpha i will have to assume the same object here please note the confusion begins here itself since for alpha there has to be no lens so for a minute you ignore that these two lenses are not present let the eye be at its own place let's imagine the same object of height h o here same h o height over here at a distance d because for condition alpha the object has to be at distance d you may make a straight object upwards or downwards it does not matter so i'm imagining this there is no object over here i'm just making an assumption that the same object is over here so let me give the name as b triple dash because already b then b dash b double dash b triple dash a double dash is an imaginary same object present over here and these two lenses are absent correct now let its head make an angle alpha with the optical center or the eye because one and the same these two are very very nearer so now what's going to happen is from this triangle i may pull out 10 alpha 10 alpha is equal to perpendicular that is a double dash b triple dash divided by this distance that is capital d over here so i may write this as a dash b dash upon a double dash b triple dash multiplied by this becomes d upon u e just rearranging the terms now please note that a double dash b triple dash is the same object as a b right so that means i may simply write it down as magnifying power m that is equal to a dash b dash divided by i'm going to simply write this as a b multiplied by d by u now let's pause for a moment and understand the individual lenses what they are doing now this is our object a b now its image is formed over here as a dash b dash like this so for this lens the linear magnification m o that is this height of the image divided by the height of the object so a dash b dash upon a b which is what we are seeing over here so this is basically m o multiplied by now let's understand what is happening here this is the image distance v for which lens the eyepiece right so i may just write this as v e but we know that this image is formed at d and this distance is u e so basically magnification for the eyepiece linear magnification and this is magnifying power linear magnification is v e upon u e but v e is nothing but d divided by u e so i may simply write this section now since this is u e as m e this is magnifying power these two are the linear magnifications so the product of linear magnifications of the individual lenses is equal to the magnifying power now let's continue our discussion forward now especially for this lens only i'm going to write the lens formula right so okay let me write one step ahead this is m that is m o now mag this linear magnification is also the image distance upon the object distance now this distance is v o and let me show you this distance over here now this is the image so from the optical center this distance is v o and the object is over here so this is u o by the way so v o upon u o is also the magnification so that means simply i am supposed to substitute this as v o upon u o multiplied by u o this is equal to d upon u e i'm going to call this as my main formula now what am i going to do i am going to write the lens equation for this lens this part over here so that is 1 upon fe that is equal to 1 upon ve minus 1 upon ue please remember in ray optics we use sign convention two times one while the derivation another while using the 
formulas in the numericals right so that means since this is a convex lens their focal lengths are positive so plus fe that is equal to 1 upon minus d minus 1 upon minus ue now look for this lens this is negative the final image is obtained at d distance but against the incident ray this is the direction of incident ray and d is in this direction so minus d over here so 1 upon fe that is equal to let me take this on the other side so this is plus 1 upon d that is minus minus becomes plus 1 upon ue this is my equation number one i'm going to use equation number one over here so magnifying power capital m that is equal to just see this one vo upon uo multiplied by d times 1 upon ue now 1 upon u is this 1 upon fe multiply sorry plus 1 upon d because 1 upon fe 1 upon ue sorry is this entire part so i'm going to simply substitute the values m is equal to vo upon uo multiplied so this becomes d upon fe plus 1 all right so this is our final equation now in most of the textbooks you will see a negative sign over here that is due to the fact that here this is a real image formation so for real image the magnification is negative so over here this part becomes minus so that's why i should be using minus sign over here all right now one more thing that i want to point out over here is that this lens only produces a linear magnification whereas this lens produces angular magnification angular magnification action is only seen by the simple microscope so this convex lens which is our eyepiece only behaves as a simple microscope now this lens has to only produce the linear magnification this has to produce the angular magnification this is the overall angular magnification one more thing guys there is something like a tube there is something called a tube length now what do you mean by tube length see tube length is the distance from the center of one lens like this to the center of the another lens so i'm going to talk about this distance now this distance is known as the tube length l now tube length is basically the distance vo plus ue look this is ue plus vo so tube length can also be regarded as ue plus v oh this is excluding all the signs because this is the sum right so just remember now in part two of the video i'm simply going to highlight case two in which we have a relaxed eye the image is formed at infinity as well as how to remember these two formulas